we are uh, getting ready to do the valve job. Now, a lot of valve jobs today are done with uh, dedicated machines such as the Surdy or DCM or that's, that's an older machine, the older one, Peterson 35, which I run all them for years. And of course, uh, the Sun in VG series. Let me tell you something about them. Through the years, when we were playing with them, they do a really good job, but at most of your top-notch head shops, unless they've done personal refinement on the Surtees or the other ones, in other words, they buy this $60,000 machine and then spend twenty grand getting it to really work right because it's about one thing, concentricity. The roundness of the seat in relation to the guide. Well, not taking nothing away from I'd love to have one, but this would still be my finishing point because nothing out there still beats the capability roundness of a stone because it is round, it got surface area all the way around it. Instead of a rotating cutter that cuts like this where pressure is applied on this end and it ain't keeping it level on this end. Now when we say concentricity, what we're talking about I like to see my valve jobs get under one thousandths run out. I've even got a half thousandths run out on some of my race jobs. And while them machines can probably get one and a half thousandths run out, typically average is two, one and a half, but they can do it real fast. It takes me approximately four hours to do a valve job on a set of my heads to put all the seats in the same position, the same width on the valve, the same spot, and get the seat run out exactly zero. Now, one good bit of luck, I guess, is this, this head was originally done with one of them carbide cutters. Uh, probably a Surtey or something like that. So they got most of the raw material removed, which is going to make my job a little bit easier. That's what you use them for, in my opinion. So, we put our well, first thing we want to do is we take our blue dicum. Oh, one other thing I found out, by the way, and I don't know if Mr. Einhoff even knew this. He should, his pocket should have felt it. This head has got hardened exhaust seats in it. Somebody put them in there, and that's a good thing. So, this head is probably going to be one of the top pairs of double hump heads I've ever done. It just lacks a couple of little things being picture perfect, but. It's pretty damn badass. So anyway, wow, I'm going to take our dockum, and I try not to make too much of a mess, but I do have to paint it, and we're going to touch the seat area. I'm going to let it dry a little while, and uh, when it dries, we'll go ahead and put the pile. Let's start on the intake first, and I'll put it in. Now, these are my stones. Let me explain something. This is the stone system, and uh, this is the real work of it. Everybody says, well, it's got a 45 seat, or some of the newer heads, a 50 degree seat. I played with them angles, too. But the seat, it only takes a second. This is the work of the head right here. The, see, the 30 degree and the 60 degree. That is what takes all the hours because you go back and forth between the two, bringing the two to a point to position it exactly where you want it. And, and it just takes time going back and forth to get every one of them exactly right. Then when you get them where they're supposed to, you come in there with a 45 with a spring, boom, you touch it and it pulls it in. Now, let me show you what most of the shops do. This is a 45 stone. When you go in there and want a valve job, I'd say at least 80% being nice. All they do, they document, put a 45, boom, put it on there, there's your valve job. And that's cool. They charge $150 and it takes them 10 minutes maybe to do it. That is a valve job not. Remember what I told you, anytime you put guides in, you have to do a three angle cut. So I'm going to show you on one of them how I do it. 
touch it and dial it in and get one of them set up. Some go easier than others, and then once I do that, uh, we'll get the three-angle valve job set. Then we're down to the last couple of steps on the head. I'm starting to see daylight now. At this point here, I got, after the valve job's done, I got a full 12-hour day left, and it's mostly uh, making sure all of them are the same, see, seeing a couple of ports, seeing how close I got, seeing my volume, and um, the rest of the little things that I do to the head, just time consuming, but anyway, we're at the valve job now. When the dicom dries, we'll go ahead and start the process. Okay, let's go ahead and start this ball game going. We'll start, like always, with a 60 degree stone. Now one of the things I always do is I always it uses my stones up quicker. I always face the stone uh, every two seats. Now one of the things you always do on here, it's what I do anyway, is I like to use the springs because it can really make all the difference in the world. Mm, that's touched too much. That 60's going down in there. Let me see. There we go. Alright. There's the bounce I'm looking for. Now, all I'm going to do is lightly touch it to see how round it is. Now, remember what I was telling you about what happens when you put new guides in and how it works. Right here is plain as day, you can see. Look how wide the seat is over here, look how thin it is over here. Voila, there be the problem. Okay, because the guide was moved, it's now on this side a touch more than this side. This ain't that bad. I'm actually kind of happy with it. It ain't going to take much to pull that in. Now, at this point, what I want to do is come across the top and lightly touch it with a 30 degree hit. Okay, we're going to check our bounce. There we go. Now, the first one is always the one that you got to play with a little bit at a time so you can see how much you're going to have to take off of it. Okay, there's our 60. Let's touch it with a 30. Now, you see what I'm talking about there? Look at that. The blue is the space between the 60 and the 30. Well, what we want to do is bring that in to where the blue line is gone. Okay? So I'm going to go back and forth here a couple of times to bring them in a little bit at a time before I pull the position on them. Let me back up. Okay? Now see this line here starting to disappear and this one over here, let me get you a good look at it so you can see. Look how this line's starting to disappear. That one's still got some thick. Remember though, that one was the thin side, that one was the thick, so she swapped sides. What it's doing is, it's moving the material and repositioning the seat, making it perfectly straight with the guide. Now do you understand why when you put guides in a head, you have to do the valve job, because if you don't, this is the shit that you get right here. Alright, I'm going to touch it again. Um, touch it with a 60. Then again with a 30. Alright, now is when I stop a second. And I'm going to pull the uh, pilot out. I took a black marker, just like a Sharpie, mark the face, and then I'm going to pop it. Golly, I won't do that again. Look at there. All right, you can see the line right there. It's just a touch to the high side. 
right there. So all I'm going to have to do is put the 60 on it and touch it just a bit. I went ahead and touched my stone again. Went ahead and, and faced it. You can barely see the line there. Let's touch it again. And then just a touch here. Alright now, look at what's happened. No blue line. The 60 has met the 30. They're down in here. Now I just took my finger and felt that outer ridge. Guess what? Where I've used the 30 to bring them in, there's a little bit of a radius. So what I usually do, what I'm going to do on this, is I'm going to come back in here with a little bit bigger 30 just to barely kiss it to try to blend that in. Whatever's left over with that, <laughs> I'm going to go back in there on the combustion chamber and blend that little in because I can't have no machinist ridge right here where it's coming out. That's why I said that's, that's four hours there. You're starting to look at the 12 hours now. You understand I'm probably going to have to go back in here and re-blend the combustion chamber right there where it connects to the seat to make sure all that's smooth and no ridge. I, damn, I hate that, but I knew it was going to happen when I did it. All right, let's check it again. Here's a fresh valve with a marking. Buddy, it don't get no better than that. A good clean line and just right there about 10 thousandths above the edge. I don't know if you can see the line. I'll try to zoom you in. A little line going across it. That's telling me where it's going to land at. Wow. You couldn't ask for much better than that right there. Alright. So I'm going to go ahead now. And touch all these in. And pull them in. The 60 and the 30. And then I'll come back. And we'll hit it with a 45. Now that we've got the 60 and the 30's all placed. I've checked them, and I mean, I've got them all right there on the money between five and ten thousandths from the very edge of the margin on the 45. So, you can see, plainly, see if we can get you a little close up. You can see right there, the line, the difference from the 30 up here and the 45. Well, now that we've done that, what we got to do now is go in here with our blue dockum and cover it again. Because we got to make room for the 45 degree angle. Now, if you notice on my dockum, I'm going below it a little bit. There's a reason. Because after I get the 45 degree seat on there, and after I lap it in, we're going in there with what I call my math scribe, a little tool that I created and welded up some years back. And I'm going to scribe a line that uses math to plot my bowl. And it's going to amaze you how much that I'll have to cut back out of the bowl and pull into the work that I've done. And remember, that was done with a certy machine and their little down lever that goes in there and cuts material out. So that just shows you that tool ain't worth a shit and, and as far as this kind of stuff is when you're trying to get everything out of it. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and um, finish up documenting everything in. I got to do the exhaust and we're going to come back and we'll hit the 45 degree angles and see what we 